Praise the Lord. Great thing is going to happen in your life today. Let me tell you ahead of time, there's going to be an upliftment in your life. There's going to be an impartation in your life. You're going to take the plane. Now, if you've been riding bicycle, you move to the next level, motorcycle. Then you move to the next level, you have a car. But now today, your journey is so far. Your journey is so high. You have to take a plane from today. You will rise high. You will go far. You will do what you never dreamt you could do. And today, for you, for me, for us, in the beginning of a new level of achievement in every life. If I, you're the one I'm talking to, where are you? Raise up that time. Father, I pray that every failure of the past, you blot out from every life in Jesus' name. A new strength, a new vision, a new direction, a new strength and power. And Lord, I pray everything that spells failure in any life young people boys girls students of universities colleges and young adults blood failure out of every life in jesus name young adults young professionals here is the time now to begin to soar above and I pray the spirit of excellence will enter everyone. Amen. We'll begin to walk, we'll not be weary. Amen. We'll begin to run, we will not faint. We're not looking back, we're not going back. We're moving up, we're moving forward. Amen. Confirm it, Lord, in every life, here, online, everywhere, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we come this session, I'm talking to you on a unique, great privilege. Empowered for excellence. Empowered for excellence. The privilege we have great privilege we have unique privilege we have a great unique privilege empowered for excellence there's a verse in deuteronomy reading from chapter 8 looking at verse 18 deuteronomy chapter 8 reading from verse 18 it says but thou shalt remember that thou shalt it means you should remember that it is the lord thy god your god for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth when we talk of wealth there wealth in your being your health wealth in your profession success achievement wealth in your academics distinction and it said it is the lord thy god that gives you the power the strength the energy the backbone the focus the drive is the one that gives you everything it takes that you have wealth in every area wealth in every pursuit wealth success achievement 
In every sin you lay your hand upon. We can afford to forget the past. Your failures are buried. Are you here? An amen. Yeah. Your defeat in the past buried. Yeah. And all those negative things and no get negative feelings will come to bury the past right here. And now, resurrection, new life, new strength, new power, new energy, new achievement, and new assignment, a new thing will be burst in your heart today. For this unique experience, great experience we're going to have as we're empowered for excellence. I'm talking to you on three levels today. Number one, I'm going to talk on the teenagers, point number one. Number two, I'm going to talk to the students, college students, university students, higher institution students, point number two. Number three, I'm going to talk to the young adults. The young eagles and the young professionals and the ones who are between the adult life and the youth life and you are ready to do what it takes and you are going to mount up even from this very day in Jesus name. Number one, why don't you say amen when I say in Jesus name. And you know, you know, sometimes there are some flies around, and you know, the flies of discouragement and the flies of uh, failure and the flies of the past. When you shout amen like that, those flies they have ears, and when they hear a great amen, they look here and there, and those flies of defeat and flies of failure they run away from you, they never come back again. <laughs> Number one. Focused teenagers learning to lean towards excellence. Where you lean in life, where you tend to rest in life, where you look at in life, that's the direction you go. That's why number one is focused teenagers learning to lean towards excellence. Number two, foremost students. I'm talking to those who are going to take the lead in their community, in our country, in our continent, in every continent. Number two, foremost students lifted onto the ladder of excellence. There is a ladder and it has a solid wall it's leaning on and then the Lord takes you and he puts you on that ladder lifted onto the ladder of excellence number three fortified young adults empowered young adults stabilized young adults fortified young adults living and leading towards excellence fortified empowered strengthened energized enabled enabled fortified young adults living and leading towards Excellence. Look at number one there. Number one, focused teenagers. You see, my children, sons and daughters, if we're going to do anything, if we're going to run the race of life, we have to be looking in one direction. Show me a runner and show me an athlete. He want, he's running and he's looking here and looking here and he's not focused. He's not focused on the goal. How can he make it? Show me a footballer who is on the field and he's not looking at the goalpost. That's why they put the goalpost there. And that is the direction that you ought to go and therefore if you are playing in my dribble it here, dribble it here it might have the back a quarter what was uh, what's the portion there it, wherever he's playing and whatever he's doing is focused on the goal post because 
because he wants to score a goal. The same thing in life. If we're going to make anything, young people, teenagers, we're focused. We're learning to lean. We're learning to lean towards excellence. Look at uh, look at Psalm one one two there, and I'm looking at verse seven. In Psalm one one two, we're looking at verse seven. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. The evil tidings there, you have a lot of things happening. You know, the college is closed over there and the school is flooded over there and the gates are broken down over there and the teachers, some have resigned and some are coming in. Some of, some of the teachers are new. Some of the teachers are old. Some of the teachers, I need to pay attention to understand their intonation and yet Yet, all those things that appear negative, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He shall not be jolted by evil tidings. He will not be distracted by whatever is happening. One of the students in our class had a major problem. She is not in class today. Another one, she is uh, kind of dropped out. He will not be jolted. It will not be distracted by all the news, all the things that happen. Why? His heart is fixed. His heart is fixed. Somebody in life who has an ambition fixed. He has a project fixed. And he has a mind fixed. His heart is fixed. Actually, our heart that takes sin our mind it takes sin our dream it takes sin our vision it takes sin our ambition it takes in everything within us and while we're focused on that thing we know that is the goal and when you set your mind you set your eyes, you set your vision, and you set everything you have within you on the goal, the place you are going, you will get there. A mile at a time, a day at a time, a step at a time, a class at a time, a study at a time. One, one, one. The hour is made up of minutes. And when you spend qualitative minutes and you push everything into every minute and then you have one hour at a time and you have one day at a time and you have one assignment at a time and every time you are focused. That hour you are focused. That day you are focused in the class. Whatever you are learning, you are focused. One lesson at a time, one class at a time, one day at a time. Everybody can do that. Uh, you say, have problem concentrating. You can concentrate for one minute, concentrate for one minute. You can concentrate for one hour. You can concentrate for one class. You have that focus. And it says, is heart, is mind, is fixed that's a person is learning to lean towards excellence there are three things i'm looking at here number one number one the passion and love for excellence number two our pursuit of learning to be excellent number three the perseverance of those leaning towards excellence three things number one passion number one number two pursuit and number three perseverance look at number one there number one is the passion and love for excellence in life we only do what we love if you are neutral, if you don't have any love, you don't have any flair for something, you might, no okay, case, good, okay, other people can do it, but because we don't have love for it, we don't have passion. 
passion for it we don't have a burning desire for that thing we don't get it done maybe you have the ability but you don't have the love for it you don't have the liking for it you don't have the passion for it. you don't do it for something that you you've seen that i'm going over there but i need this bridge of secondary education i need this bridge of college education i need this bridge of personal education and because of that i grow to love that thing i love it not for its sake i love it for the goal for the sake of the goal i want to reach uh, you see do you love uh, english language well as you are teaching us all to see here and there put the sentence together here here is the subject here is the you know subjunction here is this the adjective this one is the adverb what's the difference between adverb and uh, adjective i don't like this you know we have to like it we have to have passion for it because it is what you love and you have passion for that's why the direction you are going to go and therefore you look at your subjects and the ones that are difficult you know if mathematics is the one that is difficult you don't say well I'm going to spend my time on the subjects I like I pick and choose but the one that appears difficult you say I will conquer this one somebody there I will conquer this one what are you? I will conquer this subject. You will conquer in Jesus' name. Passion, passion, passion. You love, you get to love it. And you know, sometimes you meet somebody for the first time. Maybe there's something about him about her you don't like. Something about her you don't appreciate. But as you talk together, interact together, and as you talk together, and share minds together, although you didn't like him, you didn't like her at the beginning in time, you grow to love each other and you grow to like each other the same thing this subject i don't like it this subject i don't want to give my time to it but take it up again and do some what we call remedial learning the things which you have learned in the past which you didn't really fully learn go back to it it will be simpler now and then you interact with that subject interact with the teachers interact with the textbook, interact with the questions of the past, interact with the questions and answers of past exams. As you do that, you create passion and you create love for excellence. Look at uh, somebody in uh, Daniel chapter 6, and I'm looking at verse 3. It says, Then this Daniel, I like that, this Daniel, it says, There are many kinds of Daniel and many forms of Daniel, but this one that we're talking about, this Daniel, what's your name? I said, what's your name? All right. Mine is William. I say, this William. Say your own. Talk. This Daniel. You know, you have to get yourself out of the bunch. Get yourself out of the crowd. You know, if you're just following the crowd, it's the way they're moving and you're moving there. You don't get yourself out and be a special person. You'll be part of the crowd. But when we're able to talk about you and we say, this Daniel was preferred above the presidents, above the leaders, above the chairman, above the princes because, because because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm that's what will happen to this youth to that youth excellent spirit will be in you now what's the demonstration manifestation of such an excellent spirit daniel chapter one i'm reading from verse eight it said but daniel you know all the other things they go normal all the stream flowing normal but daniel when it comes in 
there's a change and today from today when you're coming i said when you're coming i said when you're coming there'll be a change other people have been talking failure they're talking defeat they're talking impossibility and that but daniel as you come thank god that's a change today thank god that's a transformation today it's happening in your spirit it's happening in your soul it's happening in your inner man but daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king with the portion of the king's meat no with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself now daniel why he said because i define myself therefore i will not defile myself you have to define who you are you have to define why you are here you have to define why you are in college in school you have to define what you want to take out from here let not society and let not anyone defile you because it is your attitude it is what you stand for that defines you i now want to give you the definition i have for you you are a boy you are a girl of excellence you are a student of excellence no matter what had happened in the past today is the beginning of a new life for every one of you and when you define yourself a new definition a new direction a new decision a new determination now i define myself this is the way to go nothing will stop you and today i want to tell you that if you will see what gets other people down what pins other people down and you say i define myself as different as distinct as a person that has a, de a, a destination and i am getting there praise the lord you are getting there look at verse 20 there verse 20 says and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them them who daniel shadrach meshach and abednego he found them ten times better Ten times better. I'm talking about you. Ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in all Israel. Look at number two there. Number two there. We're looking at the pursuit of learning and to be excellent the pursuit when somebody has passion just like when you put a kettle of water on fire maybe a stove and then when you put a lid there if the water is still cold or it's rising a little bit 10 degrees fahrenheit 50 degrees fahrenheit the lead on the kettle will stay there but when it gets to boiling point you see that's what you need to have that the passion you have the love you have is rising and the temperature is rising and you get to that boiling point that lead will fly 
lead that covered you up the lead that limited you the lead that stops the favor the vapor from going up that lead will fly up it is what is in you that causes that movement that you now pursue passion leads to pursuit uh, look at that one he's not pursuing anything wakes up in the morning and then during the day the whole day is gone and uh, there's no progress he didn't even add a mile he didn't have a yard he didn't add a meter to his progress why there is no passion so there's no pursuit but when you have uh, the passion and there's something on the inside of you boiling you will move on greater knowledge and greater achievement in Jesus name look at Proverbs chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 9 Proverbs chapter 9 reading from verse 9 give instruction to a wise man and it will be yet wiser give instruction to a wise man you're doing well already but now you're going to do better you're doing good already but now you're going to do better you, you have been following a good pattern and a good speed but now you're going to have a higher better greater plan in your life in jesus name you see the one that said i've learned enough i've known enough why do i need to go to the next class why do i need to go to the next level he's forgotten what we're told here give instruction to a wise man is already wise he has the foundation and the basis of being wise he will be yet wiser teach a just man and he will increase in learning i pronounce that increase upon every life here today in jesus name the achievement of the past is going to be like a platform it's going to be like a springboard you see those people that dive into the ocean into the sea they have uh, uh, they walk to that uh, pla uh, that uh, platform and then there's a spring there and then they're you know going up and down they're ready to launch now and they launch into the deep that is what we're here for that this that you have got in the past it will be like a springboard and then you will dive into greater achievement in your life in jesus name look at proverbs chapter 2 and i'm reading there from verse 3 proverbs chapter 2 verse 3 it it says yea yes if thou Christ after knowledge it's like you know where's the knowledge where's the knowledge they say it's in class two I mean class one and you are crying after knowledge I'm eager to get to class two because what I'm looking for is in that class now you are JSS and and you say I want knowledge I want knowledge they say it's in senior secondary and you say I am eager to go there Every Everything that needs to be done, you do it now because you are crying after knowledge. I finished my secondary school, but I'm still pursuing knowledge. It's a pursuit, and I'm running after, I'm driving after. You're not allowing yourself to say, you know, to take that school side. I'm telling you, we're ready in the day, we're ready in the night. I don't know what I'm going to do now. You see that there's still knowledge. You are still not the periphery of knowledge because of that. You have have a pursuit and you just take this as the springboard and you're learning to be excellent and it says if thou Christ after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding then in verse 4 it tells us in verse 4 it says if thou seekest her as silver like other people are seeking for silver you're seeking for knowledge you're seeking for increase and searchest for her as for hidden treasures and then in verse uh, look at uh, verse uh, four verse six it says for the lord giveth wisdom he'll give you wisdom and then it says out of his mouth cometh knowledge he'll give you knowledge and understanding you will have i will have i will have number one is the passion 
Number two is the pursuit. Number three is the perseverance. Perseverance, that word perseverance means that, you know, sometimes a flesh is not stone, a brain is not made of iron or steel. Because of that, we sometimes get tired, we sometimes get weary, and we sometimes it's like, should I go on? Can I go on? Can I do it? And that's the time this virtue of perseverance comes in now. Perseverance is a virtue, and we're not born with perseverance. When a baby is born, if there's any need, cries. If there is any attention he wants, he cannot endure that quietness from the mother or from the family. He cries. When he cries, we are not born with perseverance. But perseverance is such an important virtue, we have to cultivate it. We have to, in cultivation, we we'll plant, we we'll water, and then we we'll see we we'll fence around what we we'll plant so that it will grow. The same thing with perseverance. Perseverance in our lives. Number one, we we'll plant that perseverance. How do I do that? I see those athletes. Don't they get tired? Yes, they do. But they keep on running. They keep on running. They persevere. They neglect their pain. They overlook their pain. They overlook their tiredness. Because they know they are in a race. And they want to get to the destination. And then when you see them, if he can do it, I can do it too. If he can pursue, I can pursue too. If he can achieve, I can achieve too. You see the doctor, prof, that spoke to us at the beginning. You see where he was. You see where he did. There will be times of discouragement. There will be times of tiredness. There will be times when the person will say, Why am I born in this locality? Why am I growing up in this local government? Why am I going through all this? But he made use of is intelligence, intellect, mind, and then if he's to get a kind of old machinery, I get it. If he's to do something very minimal and small to remain alive, I'll do it. And if it is to go for a kind of a training that is not full time but part time, I'll do it. He gets tired, he gets weary. He gets unhappy when he compares all the people that are having it easy in life. It will come like that. But it is when you say, I will persevere. I will move on. I will endure. And I will go through whatever I need to go through. And you persevere like other people have persevered. You will have that Plant, and then you're not sure that you're not sure that what we hear we practice what we hear somebody said he persevered and it's the way he did it and i will do it and then you're not sure that it begins to grow but then you must understand what we lose if you allow perseverance to get to the level i've endured enough I have run enough. I have gone that way enough. I have fought my tiredness enough. You see, when you stop, everything will be going down. You have to have opportunities every day to persevere. As something comes, you've overcome tiredness in that area, and you've overcome weariness in that area. Another area comes now. You are getting tired. You're not give up. Today, you must persevere. Tough, you must persevere. Because when tough times come, tough people keep on 
persevering but the people that say it's tough and because it's tough i'm going back home i can't do anything anymore tough times come and tough people tough teenagers persevere you'll persevere i said you'll persevere and look at this look at proverbs chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 14 it says for the merchandise of each is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof the fine gold do you see businessmen how they persevere do you see the people who are running after sales how they persevere I, I knock on that door as a salesman and the fellow there opened the door and said what do you want S tell me in a minute and then you put on a smile you say I came to tell you of, uh, something that just came out it just uh, produced and it will give you a better life it will be a happier life it will make everything easier for you the things you'll not be able to do in the household i bring you this commodity and, and, and with a smile you, you say come on in come on in you need more than one minute you see if at the time that you know it came in and the fellow said uh-huh one minute what do you have if he didn't wear a smile if he's not uh, you know kind of attractive and they'll send him back from there whatever the world is doing against you the world frowns against you the world opposes you the world criticizes you and the world puts you down and the world denies you the opportunity you ought to have you persevere and as you persevere things will change for the better in my life in my life things will change for the better in jesus name look at verse 15 there in verse 15 she is more precious than rubies he's talking about knowledge he's talking about understanding and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her look at proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 proverbs chapter 22 we're looking at verse 29 it says seest thou a man you can put your name there. Seest thou a woman? Seest thou a boy? Seest thou a girl diligent in his business? Diligent, not in other people's business. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Now, when they tell us that, we shouldn't be offended. He's saying, why are you poking no sin? Why are you trying to change something that doesn't belong to your realm and to your area? Why are you trying to help other people and you're not helping yourself? Mind your business. I will mind my own business. I will mind my own business. I will study my own books. I will do my own homework. I will do my own assignment. I will fill my own form. I will seek admission to the college I want to get to. I will mind my own business. It says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men i say amen for you amen. look at number two now point number two we're looking at foremost students lifted onto the ladder of excellence the lord will take you from where you are now and you're going to the top in jesus name Samuel chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 8 for Samuel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 8 he the God of heaven the God of the power that never fails he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the donkey to search them among princess that's what he's going to do to you and for you today he will lift you up from the dust 
He lifts you up from the basement of your profession. And you're not all the time, every time you come, they direct you to the basement. And there you are. For many years now, the basement of your school, the basement of your education, the basement of your profession. They say, okay, you know, you know your place now, your seat is over there. But today, the Lord is going to remove your seat from the basement. And it's going to take you to the highest level and the top story of that apartment, of that place in Jesus' name. Because it says, He raises up the poor and the beggar out of the donkey to search them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 he says, he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. Enemies will not prevail over you. And the people that stand at the crossroad, at the way, whether you will get up or not, before you get to that crossroad, the Lord will clear them up for you. Yeah. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the foundation of leaders like British for excellence. The leaders that God himself like breeds for excellence. We have a foundation. What can the righteous do if the foundation be destroyed? Number two, the formation of lives lifted to excellence. And number three, the friend's loyalty on the ladder towards excellence. Look at number one. Number one is the foundation of leaders liberated for excellence. Excellence. We're looking at uh, Psalm 11, reading from verse 3. It says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, think about that in our own context. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the diligent, determined students and the future leaders do? What can they do? We have to keep the foundation. Have you noticed when you have the foundation of the times table? Two times two, two times three, two times four. And then you come to six times seven, and six times eight, and then you come to 12 times 11, and 12 times 12 foundation. As you move to the next class, you don't throw the times table away that I'm now in college, I don't need time. Yes, you still need that. That's foundation. And then when you go to university, and when you are in the polytechnic, and anywhere you are, you don't throw that foundation away and say, that's you know, foundation, that's two times two, that's three times four, and that is five times ten. Now, that foundation still has to be there. And even when you have graduated, you become a professor, you cannot throw the timetable away and say that, you know, that one is elementary. We keep the foundation. The same thing in our learning. The rudimentary things that we have learned. And because of the rudiments we have learned, and we keep that foundation so that to build and to do anything, we still need to measure and we still need to put the plumb line there and it's the foundation that will help us. That's why it says if the foundations be annulled, destroyed, Taking away, the foundation is no more there. What can the engineer do? What can the doctor do? And what can the nurses do? What can the tailors do? What can those professionals do? If the foundation, the basic knowledge they learned at the beginning, if they throw that away, that means that whatever we're doing now, whatever we're do, wherever we are now, we keep that 
foundation and then when it comes to the moral life to the spiritual life to the religious life we have the foundation and if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do look at uh, second timothy chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 19 second timothy chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 19 here it says nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure. Nevertheless, the basic understanding we have that God is and that God still remains today and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That foundation, the foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation of the love of God. The love of God for you, for me, to, for everyone. The foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation, he hates evil because he's a good God. He hates unrighteousness because he's a righteous God. He hates anything that will hurt your neighbor because he's the God of all creation, the God of all flesh. We need to keep that foundation. And it says, nevertheless, if the foundation, the foundation of God standeth sure, have been this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man, every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I need a good amen. amen. We're coming to number two here. Number two here is the formation of lives lifted to excellence. God wants to lift you up. And today, it will lift you up. Amen. Where are you there? God bless you there. Because you're the God who forms us and reforms us, who changes us, and then he makes something better out of our lives. Now, in the formation, if you're forming something, have you looked, looked at uh, those people uh, that, you know, they make the pots, they make the cups, they make the plates and all that, and, and they, do, they go through the process of formation. Look at that clay, just a lump of clay and then they'll break down that clay they will soften that clay then they'll have a pattern uh, for the mulch of that clay and eventually when everything comes out they'll pass it through the heat and through some fire it becomes solid now and they put some decorations on of what they have made that's what God does there is a process of forming us and he will you know he formed us originally but sin deformed us education tries to reform us but it's not enough it takes the hand of god that formed us originally to now reform us and refashion us and do something that will become a brand new creature amen, amen. and then uh, you also now begin uh, to form and to make the things in your life. Look at Proverbs chapter 24. I'm looking at verse 27. In Proverbs 24 verse 27, prepare thy work without. Prepare thy work without. What does that mean? You have a work to do. Prepare thy work without. As we, you know, as you know, for children, we're going to school. And the previous night, I'll be going to school tomorrow morning. And so I pick my exercise book, I pick my textbook, and I put everything in my bag ready to go. You're preparing outside tomorrow you are preparing today what you'll need tomorrow and now you go to the next level you prepare your work you prepare your studies you prepare your personality without that is outside next month outside next year today you are preparing outside next year you are preparing for next year now you have finished school and you now want to go for a particular profession you prepare yourself outside that profession i want to be a doctor aha uh -huh. what subjects will i need 
what lessons will I need? I want to be uh, whatever profession you can mention yours. I want to be that. What do I need now to prepare to get over there? We prepare ahead of time. You see, there are people, they live from day to day, no preparation no formation of anything the day comes and then they're here today what do i do today what am i going to have today you have to prepare ahead of time don't you see this program this program was said on saturday the 26th of november we're going to have the empowerment for excellence for youth before this saturday came were prepared all the things we're going to do we're going to have we have to prepare that's how life works you have to look at the future you have to look at what is ahead of you and you prepare ahead of time prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself make it fit for thyself i'm going to run and the shoes i wear they have to fit they fit me and they fit the race because a slippers will not do and a real a shoe will not do therefore i have to have what will do you want to play the tennis and then you have to have the real but you ought to have and everything and sharp eyesight and you need to know how to attack that how to get back that you see we prepare everything but if you don't prepare how do I prepare I practice I practice I practice I'm going for one game and I practice a thousand times so that my body my sight, my bending, everything is used to what I want to do. That's how life is. That you're always preparing yourself afterward. Build thine house. Then you'll be able to build a profession now. And then also you prepare yourself. Some people say, I'm going to heaven, going to heaven. And I say, what preparation are you making? I don't need to prepare. I just want to get to heaven. Everything needs preparation. Everything on earth everything in the great beyond will prepare you repent of your sin you believe on the lord jesus christ you take him as your lord and savior and then by the grace of god you will get there I will get there. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the friend's loyalty on the ladder towards excellence the key the, the friend's loyalty on the ladder for excellence and you know what if we're going to go through life and we're going to make it we cannot be a lone ranger we need love we need understanding we need help a helping hand and it is all that that our friends will Friends will come and those friends will help us so that we get to the place we need to get to. Look at Proverbs chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. It's a two-way traffic. You to your friend and your friend to you. That if you want a smile from him, from her, you smile. If you want a helping hand from him, from her, you give a helping hand. If you want joy and happiness and satisfaction from him, you give that too. Because it's a two, it's a two way um, traffic. It says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity now what kind of friend should I have what kind of friend should you have that will help you that will make you to go on in the journey that the Lord has given you now I want to ask the ask it like a question who is your friend how is your friend number one you see agreeable or aggressive you see somebody always again always wanting to beat you down aggressive in even towards you you see agreeable or aggressive b you see brotherly or brutish beast the way he talks 
And the way he pounces upon somebody, you see, brotherly and nice and friendly or brutal. See, you see, courageous or cowardly. The friends we have, the one that is cowardly, is not able to do anything there's always difficulty there there's always danger there there's always uh, you know what i cannot handle that you see cowardly d you see disciplined or a derelict you see a disciplined person he knows when to talk he knows when not to talk he knows how to relate he is disciplined and he considers how you will feel how you will think he considers what impact and what effect what he says and what he does you see exemplary or exploitative exemplary exemplary in love exemplary in helping exemplary in being considerate or you see exploitative just wanted to exploit you to get something out of you you always get and you always sucks it out without you having any benefit you see focus or flirting your friend the one you choose as your friend what kind of friend would this be will this one be able to get you to where you want to go you see godly or godless you need to think about that the kind of friends you have and the people you are going on with we don't just want to have any friend it's a friend that will love us a friend that will lift us up a friend that will get us to where we're going each you see helpful or Harmful. It's a friend. It's a friend. And when you are planning on doing something and you want to get here, get there, it's hurtful. It's harmful. And it's hindering you from getting where you ought to get. It's like it's not happy with your progress. It's not happy with the increase. It's not happy with going on. With you going on the ladder of excellence, helpful or harmful. I now is he. I is he industrious or idle? Now he also always wants to talk, wants to talk, wants to talk. You want to read, you want to talk, you want to do assignment, he wants to talk, and you want to, you know, check up that internet and see how to go further. You're industrious, you are always on the move, and you are a go-getter, but it's your friend an idle one. You see, just or jealous. That French is just, he considers things in the proper way, in the proper measure. And it's just in his evaluation, it's just in the exhortation, it's just in example, it's just in everything that he shares with you. Or you see, jealous. You're moving forward, he's jealous, that's a friend. You're moving up and he's jealous, is that a friend? And he's wanting to derail you. And he's wanting to, uh, you know, triple you over. Is that a good friend? You see, kind or kidding. Anything he says, you know, with that plastic smile, you know, he just wants to get at his kidding. You can't trust him. You can't trust that. But you see, kind, genuinely kind, these are the friends that will help us. And then we we'll say, you see, loyal or lying. You see, loyal or lying. You know, whatever he tells you, when you hear from another source, you say, oh, this is my friend, but he's always telling me lies. Now, why does he tell you lies? He doesn't want you to know the truth that will make you successful you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free you see mindful or meddling you see mindful is mindful of your soft points is mindful of your delicate point is mindful of what can easily get you and get at you is mindful what he says and what he does and relates with you is mindful or you see meddling he meddles in the affairs of other people he meddles in the you know conditions of other people the thing that do not concern him he is meddling what kind of friend do you have is he noble or is he narrow-minded narrow-minded you know if you um, you try to go to the library he says why don't you stay in the room here you uh, say i need a book there i need 
reference a book there. I need to get on the computer there. But he says, you know, we have all the textbook in here. He's so narrow-minded. In every area of life, he is not noble. How can this be a friend? A friend that will lead you to the place you ought to get to. And then... Oh, is he open or oppressive? Is he open or oppressive? Once he opens his mouth, once she opens her mouth, oppression will come. Is he positive or pessimistic? You always see the dark side of life. You want to move here, be very careful. You want to go there, be very careful. You want to study that, be very careful. You want to join that course, be very careful. You want to get this done, be very careful always pessimistic he, he cannot take any risk in life to move out where he ought to move or you see positive you see quiet or quarrelsome the friends we have are they quietly just following saying i'll watch i look i think before i decide before he leave and he's quiet while in the process of thinking through he doesn't jump at conclusion a friend the friend that will help us to be what we ought to be they are positive in life practical in life not pessimistic you see respectable or just rotten he doesn't respect anybody anybody that crosses his way crosses her way her language rotting her reaction rotting her life rotting her utterance the dirty thing that comes out of his mouth of her mouth rotting is that a friend or your friend is respectful and respectable and then is selfless he'll think about you he'll think of your good not selfish which one is your friend is he selfless or is he selfish T is it thoughtful or thoughtless now why do you always say that to me that discourages me oh I didn't think about that why did you tell me that that puts me down oh I, I didn't think of that I was happy and joyful and excited before you came now you came this thing you have said now just deflated my balloon I didn't think of that they are thoughtless such people but your friends the people that will help you when you want to have a friend a friend now a friend that will continue a friend that will keep on lifting you up on the ladder of excellence they are thoughtful, not thoughtless. Are they unwavering or unsteady? The friends, you know, today is full of smiles and things that good. You are my friend, and I love you, and I appreciate you. But to, tomorrow, and nothing else has happened. You have not offended him. You have not offended her. She's moody, and then she's looking down, and she's depressed. Even her look, even her shoulders that dropped, everything can bring depression on somebody. What has happened? It's unsteady. What kind of friend do you have? Are your friends unwavering? or unsteady are your friends virtuous or vicious vicious that your friend they are virtuous they have virtue and they have things that will lift a person up things that will make a person desire to live i want to come to class the following class and the following because my friend is always an encouragement and is virtuous courage is a virtue Courage is a virtue, and uh, you know, vision is a virtue, and determination is a virtue. And when you have that virtue, with a virtuous friend, uh, how far you can go in life? You see, watchful or wasteful is your friend. The one you say, "That's my friend. That's my friend," and we're going together because you'll not go beyond generally the level of your friend. You see, watchful or is he wasteful now x is he an ex sinner or ex sage 
ex sinner he was a sinner before like everybody else but now ex is no more into the sin business anymore all he does now he loves what is bright what is good what is righteous what is encouraging what is helpful he is an ex sinner that's a good friend but now there are some ex saints ex sage he was a sage before he was saved before he was a real good person he was righteous before but now mm -mm. all that righteousness no i don't want that again and all that good life is an ex sage no more a sage you see yielding or yelling yielding you see something good he said i bow you see something you know, helpful he said i yield to that he hears something good and he says i yield to that i want to be that kind of man that kind of woman that kind of boy that kind of that kind of young adult because he is yielding other people when they hear something you know, that demands correction anything that demands turning around and do something good it begins to shout it begins to yell and you say what's happening over there anybody hurt there and he's yelling and yelling on top of his voice anytime truth wants to penetrate anytime light wants to penetrate he has the habit of just yelling and yelling now that will not help as a friend Z you see zealous or do see have zero zeal just there like a log of wood just there immovable just there there's no passion there's no vision just there there's no zeal zero zeal now you you can tell which one which such a friend that you have are they on this side good are they on that side bad what are you going to do now have the friend that will help you look at proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 in proverbs chapter 18 reading here from verse 24 it says a man that has friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother the lord help every one of us in jesus name the lord will help you i said the lord will help you point number three now number three we're looking at fortified young adults living and leading towards excellence fortified strengthened energized empowered and we're living uh, towards excellence we're looking at philippians chapter 4 verse 7 and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your heart and minds through christ jesus if i were you i would say amen, amen look at three things we're looking at here three things here number one creating cultivating constructing a better future that's what we do as we finish round up now you say okay i'm going to work on this and i'm going to create i'm going to cultivate and i'm going to construct a better future number two confessing correcting countering your beat your bitter failures the failures of the past will come to god will say god i want to start on a new stage because i confess and because i correct because i counter the bitter failures of the past number three compelling conserving contributing a bigger fruitfulness look at number one very quickly number one is creating and cultivating and constructing a better future 
better future. In Ezekiel chapter 36, I'm reading there from verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 11, and it says, I will multiply upon you men and beasts, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will do, I will settle you after your old estate, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. God says, you now, you have come on the line. And he says, I'll do better things unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Better things, number one, better desires. Better desires. Now, you look at your life and you say, now, for the future, better desires. Number two, better decisions. Desires must be followed up by decision. Number three, better delays. Ah, what does that mean? You see, there are people that want to have instant gratification, instant pleasure, instant gain, instant achievement. Delay that. Gratification will come later. Celebration will come later. Eating this and eating that. Feasting will come later. Better delays. Number four, better discipline. If you had been on discipline before and your life just flabby because there is no discipline, but now better discipline. Number five, better dutifulness. You're not dutiful, you're industrious, and you lay your hand on something to do, and you do it till you finish. Better devotion. And number seven, better destiny. The Lord will take you there. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at confessing and correcting and countering our bitter failures of the past. You see, as we come to the Lord, we must remember, if I keep on doing the same dumb things I did in the past, the same failure I experienced when I was doing those dumb things, the same thing I will have. But if I say no, something bitter, I confess that to God. And then I correct that in my life. And what I do now, I counter. I counter. I go against those things that, you know, had brought me down. Look at this number one. Bitter speech of our mouth. That's what drives friends away from us. That's what drives lovers away from us. The bitter speech, bitter substance. You know, the people that have that substance, they want to go on high and they want to be on top of everything and they want to silence every emotion. Therefore, they take those drugs, those hard drugs, bitter substance. You get rid of them, bitter slavery. You bring yourself, you're being like a slave to them a slave to that, a slave to that until that thing overmasters you, overpowers you. You confess that, you clean up that, you correct that, and you counter that, and then bitter sweetness. That thing appears sweet, but you know it's bitter. It has a bitter end. It has a bitter consequence. It has a bitter outcome. And because of that, you want to get off that bitter sweetness and bitter sacrilege. Sacrilege is when people blaspheme God and then you've been taking pleasure in that before you pack all that aside. You say, now I'm going to confess and all that will not begin. Bitter strive. Bitter strive. Always striving. Now, if you, life is short. If you go throughout life fighting, you go throughout life strife and you go throughout life violence what are you going to enjoy life and the guilt and the condemnation is there all the, those bitter things we confess them we correct them we counter them we don't walk in that direction anymore and bitter sail bitter sail you see i don't understand that there are things that are not for sale 
Look at your life. There are commodities that are not for sale. There are good, good things in your life that are not for sale. How can I tell you that? How can I explain that? They'll say, man, this man, actually his heart was soft. And when Elijah spoke to him, he went softly. But he sold himself to Jezebel, Ahab. Because he had sold himself, all the good things in him, in him, he had sold unto Jezebel. There are some things you need to know is not for sale in your life. Give me a good amen. amen. There's a, a newspaper, national paper, and it used to publish, uh, you know, something for our young people, both boys and girls. And then sometimes they'll have an article, they'll say, virginity not for sale. And you take a cue from that, there are some good, good things in your life. Integrity, not for sale. Vision, not for sale. Courage, not for sale. Ability, not for sale. Strength, not for sale. Samson didn't understand that. That the gift he had was not for sale. Even Solomon didn't understand that. That the wisdom he had was not for sale. And Ahab did not know that his person and personality was not for sale. You must determine in your life. Look at the conviction there not for sale. Look at the courage there, not for sale. Look at the confidence there, not for sale. And look at the passion and the mission that you have, not for sale. Bitter sale. But we correct all that and now we're ready to climb. I said now we're ready to climb. Where are you? Look at number three here now. Number three, compelling, conserving, contributing, bigger fruitfulness. The Lord wants you to bear fruit. The Lord will equip you. You will bear fruit. What kind of fruit? Good fruit? More fruit? If you've been bearing good fruit before, as we pray together now, more fruit in your life in Jesus' name. Much fruit. That your fruit here at home and fruit there in the community and fruit there in the office. Good fruit everywhere you go. Much fruit. Beneficial fruit that you will benefit many people around you. Beneficial fruit, better fruit, the best of fruit, and Godward fruit. I invite you to a new start, a new beginning in your life. That from today, mark this this down. Higher you will go, better things you will do supernatural help of the power that never fails in your life in Jesus name rise up there rise up there and very quickly just say Lord here I come Lord here I come I receive here I come I receive here I come I receive tell the Lord the past failure say Lord I am sorry I'll not go that direction anymore. Cleanse me, forgive me, change my life, turn my life around, transform my life. Let him do it right there. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. He's cleansing you right now. As you believe, be it unto you according to your faith. Amen. 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 Rest up your hand. A new journey now. Rest up hand. Higher heights now. Rest up your hand there. The past is going to go in the water under the bridge. Amen. Buried. Amen. Buried. 
new life will resurrect and rise up in your life in Jesus name father in the mighty name of Jesus manifest your love to everyone your goodness to everyone your mercy to everyone forgive their past recreate renew in them a new beginning Lord grant them the faith to hook in link in to Jesus the Savior right now Lord I pray you grant them your own salvation new strength now new power new vision new passion a new focus in Jesus name make them first foremost in their endeavors and anything that ties down pulls back anything that hinders progress cut away from their lives in Jesus name any sickness any infirmity heal them deliver them new strength now new healing now total deliverance in every life in Jesus name Lord I pray that you grant them fortification strengthening might power and whatever they found impossible in the past all things are now possible take the limit of their lives and make them to soar high high higher higher highest 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 in jesus name we pray amen it is confirmed in your life